Welcome to Reinventing Perspectives. My name is Priscilla and I'm going to be talking about a book which I wrote called Raising Winners. I'll read just the back of the book. Good, bright, smart young people fail to reach their potential because they never learn what life demands and that it's not personal. Nurturing a winner's mindset in our children will forever change the course of their lives. It's a compass for doing life successfully. We don't know what circumstances our children will face tomorrow, but we do know this way of thinking about life challenges and opportunities will provide an invaluable internal guide. We may not have a million dollars for our children to inherit, but we have the ability to give them a head start. Let's give them an advantage in life. This book really came about because of life experiences and because of everything that I was seeing happening around us. You know, the Bible says, train up a child in the way that they should grow. It never hit me until I realized that the Bible doesn't say bring up a child. Bring up a child implies providing food, shelter, clothes, schooling, etc. That's bringing up a child. Training up a child Think about training like an athlete. That's a whole different ball game. The way that an athlete trains for an event, that's the mindset that we should bring to the way in which we raise our children. So when the Bible says, train up a child in the way that they should grow, I started to think about this, not only from a spiritual point of view. Most of my writing is about entrepreneurship and Christianity. So I started thinking about this in terms of entrepreneurship and children, kidpreneurship and Christianity. That why is it that we see, and we all know a lot of people, and sometimes we are these people, you know, good people, believers, people who love God, people who work hard, but are just not getting ahead. Like what is missing? And I felt, this is my opinion, that what's missing is an, is an understanding of what it takes to get ahead. We've almost been conditioned, most of us in any way, have been conditioned to think that life should be easy. And when it's not easy, it's almost like a sign that we shouldn't be doing something. And the reality is, life is not easy. And being aware of that from a young age, being trained up in a way that you accept adventure, that you accept hard work, that you always come to an opportunity with a yes. And remember, I think it's Thomas Edison who says, opportunity is missed by most people because it looks like hard work and is dressed in overalls. Looking at children and entrepreneurship and children Christian children entrepreneurship, why? Because I felt that children have the capacity to learn anything. Unlike us, it's not that we don't know what to do. We know what to do. We read books, we go on YouTube, we you know, invest in programs, so we know what to do, but we just don't do it. Whereas in children have a unique ability because they don't know any other way of doing it, that if they're taught from a young age how to to learn and do. They continue that through their life. So that's the part of training up children. So a few points from Raising Winners. First of all, the first chapter is titled, Money is Not a Taboo Topic. Everyone, children, adults, everyone should talk about money. It's not a taboo subject. We all need money to live on. We all need money even to fund Christian missions. But if we don't talk about it, and we don't come up with ways of understanding money and looking at how to earn money and looking at how to grow money and looking at how to give money and tithe and you know, looking at money in a positive way rather than looking at money as something that should never be discussed despite the fact that we need it for everything. So that's how I start the book. Let's teach our children, let's teach ourselves to talk about money and be okay with talking about money. Yes, I know for myself, and I think for a lot of people, this is my opinion, the reason we don't talk about money as much is because we feel exposed when we talk about money. Exposed either by our lack of money, exposed by the fact that we think maybe we 
we are not earning enough or we don't know how to earn enough or we may never earn enough. And because we associate money with a sense of self, and that's problematic right there. Rather than looking at money as something that is just a means to an end. And that's what we want to teach children while they're still young. That look, anybody can earn money, and this is how you earn money. And let's talk about money, because money has nothing to do with who you are. Yes, we use money, but it's just a means to an end. It's not something that defines you. The second thing that the book talks about is about teaching our children to be enterprising. Even if you don't like entrepreneurship or you don't want your child to be an entrepreneur, maybe you want them to be you know, a professional, a lawyer, a doctor, whatever it may be. Still, even in those professions, in order to be very successful at them, you need to be enterprising. Look at, look at the world that we live in today. There are lawyers who are broke. Okay, there are doctors who are broke. There are accountants who are broke because there are musicians who are broke. Anywhere where you just look at the craft and you neglect the business aspect of doing whatever it is that you're doing, you'll never bear the full fruit of what you should do what you do. So let's teach our children, whatever they decide to be, to be enterprising. For example, if you're an artist, at heart. You love music. You dream music, you create music. That's what you love. Be a musician who understands the business of music. Because that's the only way that you can turn whatever it is that you love, whatever profession it is that you have, into something that is profitable enough so that you can fully enjoy it and fully reap the reward of doing that thing. The third thing that the book talks about is approaching everything with a sportsman attitude. I really looked at athletes and just found them so remarkable. If you think about the way that an athlete will train for years for an opportunity, there's no guarantee, you know, they're not training knowing they're going to win, they're training just for the opportunity to compete. On the day, of whatever event it is, if they don't make it for some reason, still, that's not the end of the story. They take whatever loss they had, they go back to the drawing board, and they look through what they did wrong, like a scientist. Not emotionally, but what could have been done better? What did the competitor do better? They study the competition, they study themselves, and then they work again for a couple of years again for another opportunity to participate. Not for a guaranteed win, for an opportunity to participate. Uh, if we all took that perspective to life, I think we'd all be bold and outrageous in the way in which we express our faith and the kind of things that we do. And we should teach our children that, because if we teach children that, you should always have an A and there is no other life besides an A, then we box them in. We box them into only doing things that they know they do well. But life isn't that way. Life is about trying things, failing, trying again, failing again, understanding what you did wrong, trying again, maybe failing again. But if with each fail, you get closer to doing it right and you get closer to the win. And really, that's the mindset that this book, Raising Winners, promotes. The fourth thing that the book talks about is that teaching our children that life is a journey. It's not a destination. It's not become a lawyer and your life will be amazing. Sometimes, and that's just my opinion, and it also comes from cultural backgrounds, where all you're ever told is, when you become this, and it's almost as if there's no life after you become that thing. And that's a completely misguiding approach because for, let's say you do become that thing, and then what? Do you begin to die slowly because all you ever could see was this thing, and now that you're there, and you're 25, or you're 28, now what? So we always wanna teach our children that life is a long journey filled with ups and downs and adventures and trying things and failing at things 
but ultimately it should be lived fully. Be full of Lord-centered, inspired, faithful acts of excellence. Be full of life. The last thing that the book talks about is that everyone and every child should be encouraged to understand themselves. What are you naturally good at? What can you naturally do? And hone in on those things. God has given you those gifts for a reason. I write about it in our blog and I'll put a link to the article down below. And the title of that article is, Have You Buried Your Talent in the Ground? We all have talents, natural God-given talents. And the Bible says, which was given a talent in accordance with his ability. And the miraculous thing is, God gives us these talents. They don't belong to us, they belong to God. And we're supposed to multiply them. How we go about multiplying them, that's up to us. But at some point, according to the parable, the master will return. And the master wants to see what you have done with what he has given you. The servant who does nothing, and he buries the talent in the ground, and when the master returns, he gives the talent back and says, Master, I was afraid and I knew that you ask for things that don't belong to you. Something like that. That's, those are not the exact words. You might want to go and look. Master says to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You wicked and lazy servant. For failing to multiply the talent that the master gave them. Because there was no lack of ability. Because the talents were given in accordance with ability. So there was no lack of ability to multiply. That was already God given. And the talent was also God given. What was left was the inspired act of multiplying what God had given. So, you know, the last thing in this book is let's help our children to identify what it is they're good at. And then help them, show them the steps of how it is you go about multiplying your natural talents and your natural abilities. Along the way, we might just multiply our own talents. So that's really the core of the book, Raising Winners, training our children to succeed. If you find any value out of this, please do like, do share. I'll put a link down below to the book and you can check it out for yourself and form your own opinions. This is just me giving you what led to me writing this book. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and have a great day.